Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Airsoft Radio, your weekly Airsoft show discussing all things Airsoft, whether it's news, opinions, or general discussions, which is what today's show is going to be all about. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Graham from Airsoft Nation, and with me is Jim up there. Hello. And Sarah up there. Hello. (laughs) It's been the first time I've been on the bottom of the show. (laughs) And even then, I was like, right, which hand are we going with? Um, Somehow, I don't think it's the only time you've been a bottom, Graham. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's one of those shows. We are here with no guests. It's going to be a shot show special, and we'll talk about all the things that we'd seen uh, released over the last week or was shown off over the last week. But if it is your first time here, welcome to the show. We're live every Monday from 9 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. And if you're watching live, don't forget you can leave your comments and opinions and any of your questions below, and we'll feature them throughout the show and do our very best to answer them. And don't forget, if you're on the go, you can also download the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcasting platforms. With that said, let's get on with the show. How's everyone been? It's been a what was I say? It's been a cra- crazy week. Of shot show. <laughs> <laughs> Worst week ever. <laughs> I did have the shot show blues though. It was like having a year ago been there. It was just like oh, I'm not there. And every tactical celebrity that I would ever want to meet <laughs> was like, oh, they're there this year. And it's just like. I'm just going to sit at home alone. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, actually, I was looking at all the photos of friends and stuff like that and was like, oh, there we've, you know, Chris Costa was there, uh, Luke yeah. T-Rex Arms was there. Although, I'll be honest, I didn't even recognise him without the hat. I don't know if you've seen the photos of him. Without the hat, I'd have walked right past him. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was really cool to see. Um, <laughs> so, I, just, I, I will put up a comment. And I'll read it. Shot Show <laughs> brought the single biggest disappointment in it in Airsoft for years. That Mark 19. A bit of my soul died when I found out it was HPA. <laughs> uh, Thank yes. you, Phil Bucknell. <laughs> and say, I, I was very much laughing at Phil, who joked around that he'd already sold his kidney on the black market and was wondering if Igor, his Russian uh, trans. I mean, his Russian dealer would help get it back <laughs> or something to that <laughs> respect once he found that it was HBA. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there was uh, definitely a lot that happened over the last week. A load of stuff at Shot Show. I know I couldn't keep up with most of the stuff that was coming through there. So the plan today, as we discussed, was to kind of bring a few things to the table each to see what we liked, what we saw, what stood out. Uh, Dr. Ego, there we go, from uh, Phil Bucknell there. Um, <laughs> yeah, talk about what we saw at SHOT Show. But I suppose before we go there, and since, Jim, you are the person who's been here before, how about giving us a quick rundown about what it's like at SHOT Show, what's involved, um, to give people a taste who've never been there before. So uh, it's in Las Vegas. It's at the um, uh, the Venetian Hotel, um, which is huge. The place has got gondolas in it that, re- that really, really work, and it's amazingly weird place to go um, and then you go into one of the convention halls um, and it's one of many and normally it takes about three or f- what, three almost four days to get around the whole thing um, and even then that's if you're doing it at a sort of brisk walking pace and not stopping to, to talk to everyone and and do all that sort of stuff so it's um it's a hectic few days to to go through and and if you've got appointments that you've got to make and you you're zigzagging all over the place and um we made the mistake last year of actually working out how many steps we'd taken and it was just like i got more exercise in that one week than i did in the rest of the year it was just purely out of spite i was just like i'm not walking anywhere ever again (laughs) (laughs) but it's um it is amazing i mean there's so the one thing i would say is like I've talked to loads of airsofters at Terra and go, oh, it's like the holy grail of places to go. I'd love to go. And it's like, you'd be miserable with sin. I guarantee it because it's like, it is a trade show. It's There's loads of cool stuff that you can't take home with you, no matter how much you try and bribe them. Um, yeah, Pete just put, he covered 40K last year and I also covered 40K carrying the bags. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <for Pete. laughs> um but uh, yeah, it's like there's not that there's not a huge amount of airsoft there. I mean, I think this year there's probably more more stands than there's ever been, 
but even still, that's like less than I would say five percent of the show. Um, there are there's halls of, of tactical gear, and there's whole there's, a, there's a one whole like row that's usually just M4s, like real M4s or, or AR variants, whatever you want to call them. Um, some of them with nice paint jobs, some of them where the table, you know, the, the display is, they're literally just selling you the barrel nut. That's all they do. <laughs> it's a company that just sells barrel nuts and they're there to sell barrel nuts to every manufacturer they can, or every, um, you know, gun shop they can. Um, yeah. so there's, there's weird stuff like that. And then there's, you get all like, like with any trade show, you'll, you'll walk around the corner and find some really weird, wan- random stuff. Um, and then, uh, there's some giant gun safes there as well, which is the bit that I take most pleasure in is imagining what my war would be like with that gun safe built into it <laughs> that you could walk into. And like it'd be it is, uh, th- those companies that make that sort of stuff are there, and they're right alongside some company that just makes like a, a nine millimeter um, plastic you know, breech flag for, for your pistol or rifle. Um, so it's, it's really, really weird and, and, and wonderful but i mean obviously a lot of the the big global airsoft companies are there you know red wolf has a stand asg has a stand and you know so is, so, it, is it completely different to iwa then is it or well, is it roughly the same so i don't know because i've not been to iwa yet <laughs> um, tune, in, <laughs> tune in in march to find out exactly well, i mean if, I think... if all things go well i'll be able to tell you that you know that there's different but it certainly looks like there is a, a big difference but um I think the scale's different. I think the audience is slightly different. I mean, IWA is a little bit easier for press and also more interesting for a lot of press uh, than shot. Shot definitely seems to be a little bit more official, but I think the sheer size and scale is totally different there. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Venetian Hotel is, and like the convention centre that sits on the back of it, it's like one city block on the strip. Like, so it's literally fucking huge it's it's the, like until you go you can't explain how big it is yeah. um but yeah i mean the fact it takes you days to walk around it always you know it's over two floors and even then once you've done the two floors they've got another thing up on the the third floor which is all the all the guys that might be there next year with bigger stands on the main floor if they can get in because from what i understand there's a waiting list for if you you know if you've got a company like you can't just go oh i want to stand at the shot show they're like get in line with the rest of these guys <laughs> um and uh because i remember, remember last year going to see spiritus there and they had a tiny little stand that looked like it was a kiosk selling paintball in a shopping center um, <laughs> and that's not to do them down because spirit is no. an amazing company but it's just that's how small it was and it was um you know that's what they were what they were working with you know and then you'll go into some halls where it's just like oh uh, here's the uh you know, the heckler and cock stand which is just like it's bigger than most retail stores are so it's just huge and then you're like oh the surefire stand with a mini gun with a, a an eotech on the top of it that seems to be make lots of sense um <laughs> but there does to be there is quite an interesting difference between stands some of them go there with some really weird things to look at and other people go like it's a marketplace and there's just boxes of stuff that yeah. you can obviously put into order um, so yeah, I mean, you know, the big old booths like H&K, it is more like an arsenal when you walk in there, everything's racked up and all tidy and you'll go around the corner and there'll be someone making wooden stocks, which you can then put into order. And it's obviously a lot more messy, a lot more hands on as you're literally, literally watching people there and then do it. Um, but it's definitely, it's quite funny how you can walk from one stand to the next and it's gone from big booth to small little uh, almost voting booth size. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, noticed, and, sorry. I, I noticed as well they have uh, a certain day when there's um, you go out in the desert and you get to have a go with all the new. Well, equipment. if you're at the right party, that could end at any night. Um, <laughs> 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 but yeah, Monday, Monday's always press day and press and media, but, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the. Um, all, all the firearms manufacturers, you know, if you've got a press pass and you're booked in with them, you go out to. The, to one of the desert ranges and you get to go and shoot all the new stuff and which is annoying because most of the retailers unless you get invited to it you know you don't get that part of the experience so the press guys are really lucky in that respect because they get 
you know, a day at the range for free, you know, whereas the rest but of us have special to... people then. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the ones that they want to impress, you know, but it's, um, but I mean, there are retailers that go along to the, to the, the gun side of it, but that tends to be more the US guys because of obviously there's no point taking some of the, the UK retailers out on the range because we can't buy the pistols or the machine guns that, yeah. that those guys are selling. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's an experience, but having done it like four times now, it's just like I've got to buy better shoes for next year. And, you know, <laughs> have I got the right bag to carry around? Because it's it's going to be all day, and and you start getting wise to things like you know buying a drink in the show, which is like you're in Vegas, it's dry, it's the desert at the best of the time, so you're already you know want a drink before you get in there, and then when you're in there, it's like five dollars or, or six dollars for for a small bottle of Coke or something like that, or, a, you know, a bottle of water. And you're just like, you get out after each day. If you've bought a sandwich and a, and a drink, you've probably spent like 30 bucks. <laughs> it's just like you hemorrhage money. You know? <laughs> so, okay, but, that. Yeah. That's the expensive part. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, there are people asking in the, the comments section already asking, you know, is there an event like that in the UK or are there any in Europe? So, Shot Show is the biggest in the world, arguably the world anyway. Um, I'm sure someone's going to say there's one in Malaysia, which is bigger, but I do think the one in uh, Las Vegas is the biggest. In Europe, you've got IWA, which is in Nuremberg, Germany, and that's in March. And then you do have the MOA. Uh, I think it's normally around about October time, which is in Malaysia, isn't it, I believe? Mm. Um, but they are kind of the biggest gun shows. Now, it's easy to say that Airsoft across all these shows is biggest in IWA, which you'll be going to for the first time this year, right, Jim? Yep, yep. And I, I, like last year, I worked the British shooting show. I spent a week up there with um, the guys from Scott Country. Um, and uh, although that is big, and like you walk around it and that, you know, that, that's a day out, you know, you're going to see a lot of stuff up there. That's probably the equivalent to half of one hole of the shot show, you know, and it's just like... God knows how many times it re repeats itself. In you know, if you were to put that inside the shot show, how many times you'd get it over? But but just, British um, British shooting show, as you say, one, it's in the UK. Two, it's open for public, and I think that's yeah. one thing. If you aren't a member of retail, you're not going to get to these events. Don't just turn up to IWA or to shot show. You're not going to get in. Tickets are kind of sold ahead of time and through vetting processes. Whereas you've got. Um, British Shooting Show, which is February the fourteenth, I believe, it is Valentine's uh, Day the best yeah. way to spend it <laughs> <laughs> at the NEC, and then you've got the Northern Shooting Show, which I believe is May. But it's fair to say both these shows aren't really airsoft orientated yet. There'll be a few stands, but it is primarily firearms, outdoors, bushcraft, and hunting. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably a topic for another show. Is like, you know, the difference between the shooting show and airsoft and and why guys we've got you know that fire real guns think that airsoft shouldn't be there and vice versa so it's um yeah it's an interesting interesting experience all of itself the, the british shooting show after watching some of the videos i saw over a shot show it's very clear why airsofters should not be there but <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, as you say, there's definitely a conversation for another time, um, not one to be thrown under the bus now. Uh, and we've had, we have had shows in the UK before. Um, we had the Airsoft Showcase, which happened. I want to say there was three years of that happening, but it was never really greatly received. There was always issues with that. But that was run by Red Wolf for a couple of years. Yeah, and, um, I mean, I remember like 2010. Uh, the it was up at the Grange. I think it was the the guys from um, oh my brain's gone to pot. Um, Gunman uh, were, were running. They were, they were trying to do a, a similar sort of experience and um, went to that one year. And it was it was a good show, but it was just again, it's like I think the problem with airsoft in the UK is that we don't have enough manufacturers in the UK. Yeah. Um, or or enough big wholesalers in the UK. I think there's probably only half a dozen really that would do it most of it's going to be retailers and then you just end up with endless lanes of retailers all selling the same stuff that's um, it i mean this is it isn't it because it, if you go for a public show you're going to get retailers and if there's no distinguished difference between retailer a and retailer b in you know who they're stocking then all it ends up being is a price war absolutely good for players not necessarily for the industry 
No, and so, some of these uh, shows are really expensive to do. I, I don't even want to guess what a stand at the shot show costs because I, I think that's more than most people own in a lifetime, probably. Yeah. But it's um, but that's Vegas, and and the really funny thing about the shot show that doesn't get talked about that much is that it's one uh, it, it's happening the same time as the porn awards do. Um, so you've got lots of uh, you know ladies that are. You know, from Attractions that outside industry. the exhibition. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't quite know what the generally way of approaching that was to say, other than that it's, a, it's like because it, it's a targeted date. <laughs> yeah, but then it's also I think it's like the week before is the tech show out in Vegas, so you get all the you know the big tech companies out there, and it's almost like an industry within itself. So, so yeah. um, an IWA happens, I want to say it's a week or a few days before a security event, right? Uh, yeah. There is a military and security event over in Nuremberg, so you do get a bit of crossover there with some of the, the traders and some of the attendees. Yes, uh, so. it's big business. I wish I, yeah. wish I was making money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's big business. When we uh, when we first went to IWA and got out the... Uh, Got out the airport with my Ryanair flight, and then you just see Glock have their own aeroplane in the <laughs> runway, and I'm like, "Damn, that's a lot of money worthwhile coming in if you're bringing in your own planes at that point." <laughs> Worth billions that company. I mean, they they had Chuck Norris on their stand. He's now the ambassador for for <laughs> Glock because um, it, it, it used to be Arlie Ermy, you know, the gunnery sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. And I got to meet him one year. And so it's just like you're on a conveyor at that point where it's just like you go up, get to shake his hand, he signs a picture, you get your picture taken. And it's like, right now, go buy a Glock. And I'm like, I'm from England. I can't buy a Glock um, <laughs> as much as I want to. Like, Give and, me that signature and, back. <laughs> yeah. the, moment they, the, things, the moment they hear, they hear that you're English, they're like, oh, I can't sell you a gun. <laughs> just just get out so just, just move I, along i just i just go there for the free pens now um but <laughs> but yeah th this year again really gutted chuck norris was there and it's just like i got a copy of delta force on dvd that i want to sign in so <laughs> i hope he's still alive next year but chuck norris doesn't die that's just stupid <laughs> no. what am I he never loses <laughs> i don't think arlie ermy's dead either i think he's just absorbed into chuck norris um <laughs> as all life forms are um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well hopefully uh we'll hear your feedback after awa as to what you watch differences you see between the shows and maybe which one you prefer um and it's fair to say everything that we've primarily seen from shot show we're going to see at iwa for majority of manufacturers unless they're specifically us based like we won't see kwa at shot uh, iwa but the majority of stuff we see now is almost like here's a glimpse as to what we're selling this year or even next year and then come IWA three months later, it's more for retailers to go, right, what are you buying now? And that's yeah. really been um, a lot of the differences that we'll see between the shows. And I think there's also a difference between the attendees there. Yeah, I think it's a great first look, the shot show. It's the, uh, you know, it's the sparkly sort of reveal. And then IWA, everyone keeps saying, it's the business show. It's, it's the, it's, there's lots of order pads around. <laughs> <laughs> So with that said, let's go with, as we said, we pick three items each through the show. Now, interestingly, we've only got one piece of gear, so to speak, when obviously there's so much that got released. But um, let's go with Sarah. Do you want to uh, throw your first item out? Yeah, well, it's actually a series of AEGs, but I am going to talk about one in particular. It's the Vulcan ASL Plus series. And the one in particular that caught my eye was the Sierra AG. So this is the ASL series. And yeah. we do, if you are watching live, we do have a video playing in the background here, which you'll see. Uh, so this is the ASL Sierra. Yeah. So if you see, it's at an M4 platform, Yep. but it has a pistol mag. Yep, riding on the, uh, the the current trend there, aren't they? Yeah. And I'll get, I'll get to that interesting part of it. Um, because that's that's what I consider 
the most exciting part of <laughs> <laughs> it is no way wait wait and see um so it's called sierra uh because it's suppressed so it has a, a suppressor built onto it they've changed a lot of the internals on this series so what they've put in this one is a quick change spring system and this is in all of the series so normally you'd remove the motor pistol grip and you lift the gearbox out but with this one all you do is remove the retaining pin from the stock tube and you can change the spring which for someone like me who's not very technically minded with these things that's brilliant because it means i can just do that myself um, it's got a rotary style hop up so it just clicks into place so the hop up will go loose over time um have you got a picture <laughs> Uh, I will be bringing it up oh, in a minute. It's okay. typ typical. I will bring a video up and it will buffer for five minutes. So the minute's only uh, the video is only one minute long, and it decides to buffer the entire time. So we're See, going I got, for. An... I got really excited then because I saw that you were putting that video up, and it looked like um, Kaiju was actually coming on the show. Then it was just like, <laughs> brilliant! It's going to be Bob, and it's like it wasn't. I was so disappointed. So that's that's a uh, that's a different one in the series, but yeah. Uh, the one that I was looking at has uh, the PDW stock, yep. which has grown on me after playing with the modifier last year. Uh, it comes with a 260 round pistol style mag. Um, but from what I've heard, you have the option of that or a 120 mid cap. Yeah. Now, what this has got on it is it has an insert called an AR pistol magwell adapter. So you can use your pistol mag in the M4 well. You can take the insert out and use a normal M4 mag. And that bit for me was definitely the most exciting part of yeah. the full amount. It was like, okay, if you've got an M4 mag or you've kind of run out of mags on the field and someone's got an M4 mag, they could literally mm. throw the mag and pull out the insert, um, which I think is a really cool, cool way of dealing with it. Rather than putting an adapter it had buying an adapter separately on the outside to actually yeah. put that on the inside is pretty cool. And also with that insert, you stick it on the top of the pistol mag and you can use a speed loader. Oh, that's pretty fancy. Yeah, as well. So it it's and it in it you can use it in all the all the series, not just the Sierra. Yeah. And of course being left handed, ampidextrous fire selector, mag release, um, beautiful for me <laughs> with all of that. um so yeah and I, I loved the part of the insert because i don't know if it's been done before but i've not seen it before and i like the options of using different mags because i have so many m4 mags I just, don't, <laughs> I just don't get used so yeah. yeah and i liked the look of it i really did like the look of it it at first glance it looked like an arp9 similar but it's an m4 platform so yeah and since the modifier i just i'm just attracted to that look i really am attracted yes. to that look and style we spoke last week um about how films and games have been a big inspiration for the firearms that we use especially airsoft related ones but the kind of this pistol caliber carbine style doesn't seem to have come from games or films but maybe just more the real steel world yep. yeah because nine mil was cheaper than five five six. And yeah. <laughs> in the same way as they started, I think it was a couple of years ago. They were rechambering a lot of pistols that were nine mil down to two two because it's a cheaper day at the range for a lot of people because the price of ammunition was going up. So yeah, it, it does look cool. My only concern with <laughs> with that gun is that you take the magazine out with the magazine well adapter on the top of it, throw the mag on the floor. Never find that adapter. Never find that adapter. Again, <laughs> and then find out it's the only thing you can't buy separate. <laughs> you got to buy a whole new gun for it. But, um, but I don't know. Falcon will probably bring that out as a separate part, I would have thought. Um, I was disappointed that they didn't fix the... Um, uh, like, so on the older version of the ASLs, there's a little window at the back of the, the gun which allows you to um, release the anti-reverse latch if yep. the gearbox locks up. Um, and so many other companies have just gone down the MOSFET route to of eradicate course. that. I, I was just like, I don't know if I like a gun that's got a little window where I've got to poke something in it to get it back working. <laughs> just again. dirt it's, getting in. It's a shame because other than that, it's a, it's a really nice looking gun and, you know, should uh, should do it. But I was just like, 
I'll break yeah. the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to throw something a little bit controversial here. Um, and someone's oh, actually just no. literally said it straight in the comment section. But most of these selling points that were said. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I, I love uh, Kaiju there. But, man, it's boring stuff that most of the industry have been doing for such a long time. That only the mag well adapter to me was something that I was like, oh, that's cool. The rest of it, I was like, quick change springs. We've had them for five years plus, and they've become the norm now. You know, like you say, MOSFETs are the norm. I mean, it is good. Um, that you, it's a quick change spring that you can get to without having to take the gun apart, um, which is what a lot of other companies didn't do. But, yeah, it's still – again, it goes back to the last week's show of innovation. Is it innovation or is it just catching up? <laughs> Catching up. See, I, I wouldn't know. You see, I, I'm, no, of course I'm, not. No, that's a it. Customer walking into this, and they show it, and I go, "Wow!" <laughs> like, yeah, we've been doing it for five years. She don't know that. <laughs> oh yeah, but I went. Yeah, I mean, the new Specner arms. What are they? Eighty quid. They come with a quick change spring. I know some companies will say quick change spring, and it's not as quick as others. Um, but I mean, in, in one of the videos I watched, he was like, oh, yeah, you have to remove the pistol grip normally, remove the motor, remove the gearbox. I was like, fuck me. That was my first airsoft gun 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I haven't had to remove a pistol grip to get into a screen God knows how long. And let's oh, be fair, granddad, how often, down. How often <laughs> do you have to change a spring? the wrong guns then, for God's sake. <laughs> how often are you ever going to change a spring? You're going to do it maybe once or twice in its lifetime. Yeah. Um, and that's if you don't end up with a collection that that's already on already as the reserve gun after six months. Someone should reinvent the dust free gun just for airsoft collectors. Like, <laughs> <laughs> your dust can't settle on it because last time you used it was <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I just as much as uh, I like the Magwell adapter, I actually like the look of the rifle. Don't get me wrong, I really like that. I just thought I wish there was a little bit more on a selling point to that because. It just wasn't a lot there, you know, rotary hops. Um, but then Falcon are also pretty, well, not pretty new. I mean, they've been around a while in Airsoft, but, I mean, they are steadily growing their footprint, you know, as a as an Airsoft brand from being a paintball company. So it's sort of a, yeah. you know. It's... I mean, it's still, still playing catch-up in my eyes there. But don't get me wrong, I think the rifle the rifle's nice. They are on the trend of these pistol-caliber carbines. They're just a year or two behind everyone else. <laughs> but then Balcom were one of the first companies to bring out lion batteries and now everyone else is catching up to that so yes absolutely just, just they forgot to tell anyone about it um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, they, they didn't market something that could have been That's... massive at the time <laughs> <laughs> i mean titan did it really well let's be fair titan are just just now yeah. it as being like necessary particularly known as like one of the only places to go for it when actually they're not um, well, they just market it really well None of us have picked the, the Titan batteries, have we, to talk about? No, because I know they've done some improvements. It's not yeah. particularly fun to talk about on the show. Well, that was the weird thing. was like for, for something that is a battery, to have like most of the pictures that I saw coming up from like the Airsoft side of, of, of Shot Show was about Titan batteries, and I just thought that was like the weirdest thing in the world. It's like, oh, we're all getting excited about batteries yeah <laughs> and they are really cool batteries i'm not knocking them it's no, just absolutely. like and that's the coolest thing that you, you, you're getting pictures of it's yeah. like... and, and they were like we've not changed much i think they've changed the packaging or whatever but they've made them more efficient some of the batteries they've got yeah. rid of and made the batteries more efficient i think mean, they're like 26 percent more charge or something like that um which is great and i mean we all want better and more efficient batteries to play airsoft with we don't want to be having to change when you're out on the field but it wasn't necessarily something to go Wow, groundbreaking! I'll bring this up on the show. And so, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but and I'm still yet to get one. I know we spoke about it in the past, but it, it was definitely on the list this year for me. Um, Jim, do you want to go next with uh, what you got next? Um, so, uh, the product I probably got most excited about is the one that the caption on the um, Instagram picture was. Don't ask us when it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so I may be being a little bit premature with this, but um, PTS have uh, got the rights to to do the the MWAL, which um, is the modular advanced laser. No, sorry, modular advanced weapon laser uh, direct action. Um, so it's a um, 
D bows and pet boxes are, are all the rage at the moment, and um, they seem to be one of the the accessories that everyone likes to run. Um, this is it's it's based on um, on on a real product, just like the D bows and pet boxes are. Um, but it, it is a laser system, effectively, that will replace you having to have a big square box on, on your gun. It will make your gun a little bit more streamlined. Um, it's got some really cool buttons on the top, which means you don't need remote tower switch leads running around everywhere. Um, will it do the same thing as the real one? God only knows. We'll wait and see. At the moment, it's a 3D so printed body. So <laughs> um, I think there's going to be more details to follow. So I would say there was... Um... Payne X, who's a previous guest yep. on the show, was actually doing an interview. Yeah, uh, I think he was on the PTS stand. You know, for yes, he was. Week, so. Yeah, he was repping it. Um, and he covered quite a lot about it, which is pretty cool. Um, as you say, it's 3D printed at the moment, but it is yeah. going to be IR, yeah. which is going to be, which is obviously what it is for the world. And it can be zeroed, which I think is going to be one of the first. Obviously, we've, we've talked about the D bells before. Yeah, well, I get it. Um, it's it's to what degree do they go after the realism for it? I know it's going to be a, a licensed product. Yeah. Um. So it's uh, but yeah, I, I think it's just going to make your rail a little bit more comfortable and you know not take up quite so much space. So, um, hopefully, we'll see it within my lifetime. Um, <laughs> but, but that, that Instagram post did not did not fill me with confidence <laughs> that this was going to be on my Christmas list this year. So, yeah. um, we'll wait and see. But yeah, and uh, if you don't want the the IR laser, they are doing the torch, aren't they? Yeah. So um, if you just want one, um, I will say I think this blew up over the week. I think this was one of the ones that I saw posted absolutely everywhere. Uh, and one of the comments I saw someone is like, "Everyone's rocking nods nowadays," and I was like. Are they in the UK? It doesn't feel like it's so big well, over here with nods. Not everyone, because um, I don't have a set yet. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> um, yeah I, I think it's becoming more popular, certainly. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, a torch and a laser in one. Yeah. So you've got everything yeah. that you need, and it's you can. It's an, it's an infrared laser, so you won't see right. it like, with your eye. You'll only see it with night vision. And this right. is it. This is a laser for night vision, essentially. Oh, okay. So yeah. you don't. You can't actually, it's useless unless you've got night vision then. Well, I mean, again, I'd be interested to see what we actually see come out of it because I, I get the impression that... <laughs> Could you be a green laser? <laughs> well, I, I, th I think they'll probably do a a laser version of it that's a bit more commercial. I mean, again, there's there's always that argument about sights banning lasers yeah. um, and, and what have you. Um, so, I, yeah, again, it's like I watched this space, but I thought it was, it was really exciting that one PTS have got a... Um, like a non airsoft brand um, that they're working with again. I mean, I remember them coming up through the whole Magpul thing back when I was a, a young whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I found my first first bag of Werther's originals. Um, <laughs> just thought that's how the program does. Um, but yeah, this is sort of. So, I mean, they, they bring they brought out loads of other products as well. I mean, they were showing the. Um, uh the, the the mag that sort of defies belief really it's 200 EPM round mid cap yeah epm um, ones because that was shown off last year but never really came out did it the yeah improved one. well i mean I, I saw it last year at shot and it was sort of still in development it wasn't really like this was going to be we're taking orders on it it was um and the again i'm terrible with names today but the guy from odin um um jordan Jordan, yeah, he was there, and uh, we were talking to him about it because he's had some involvement, from what I understand, in in the development of that product. The, the only thing that really baffles me about that is why there's a little orange dot on there to tell you when your mag's empty. It's like I'm not going to really sort of stop and look at the side of my gun to see if it's it's empty. I'd have put it on the back of the mag if it was me, but you know, you're more likely to see it there. Yeah, if you need it at all. I mean, the 250 rounds, is that a mid cap or is that just a high cap taking the piss? Um, well, let's have, let's, I know it's not a chat about that, but let's have that chat because <laughs> this something comes up. If it's not got a winder, is it a mid cap? Well, that's, that's, the theory. that's always been discussed, is it? If it's not got a winder, it's a mid cap. And this is what I argued with the, the Tipman mags, which are 200 round magazines. There's no winder on them. So I thought they were the perfect replacement for any rifle. You don't need high caps anymore, just get 200 round mid caps. But there is an argument there about what's class a mid cap at that point. So it's, it's the spring with the tube, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so you'd say there's no winder. Very, you just but, but what defines medium capacity? 
Yeah. yeah. But I, the, I've got a slightly different approach to this argument, which is I would much rather see 250 round mid caps than I would 300 round mid cap, uh, high caps. So if we banned yes. all high caps and had to go <laughs> 250 round mid caps, I wouldn't argue with it. I well, think that's fine. That's a step in the right direction. Hundred percent, and I couldn't agree more with the whole tactical maraca. You're no longer running around going. <laughs> ch -ch 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 -ch. It's like actually, if we all have mid caps, which are a, a high enough capacity, but you wouldn't notice if you were a brand new player used to 300 round max. Um, so no, I'm all for that, and I've got a couple of the high round mid caps, and I love them because they're reliable. They're great for skirmishing with, as opposed to running around with 60 round mags and feeling like I need to have a a whole belt rig on me to keep up with a skirmish attitude. Yeah. <laughs> So, but um, banal box mags, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. So, um, sorry, I just thought we were being controversial for controversy sake. <laughs> so, someone in the comment section is just saying, um, surely the mid caps and low caps are differed by capacity, so why not call it a high mid cap? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that, isn't um, that as bad as some of like Nike's trainers? It's a, a mid low, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, no, I think the magazines are good. I agree with you. It's weird to see that orange thing. Maybe it's some of that's more of a maybe a, an advertisement gimmick. You know what magazine someone's using now. Yeah, um, no, I'd hate to and see And a that teammate knows you're empty or an, and an enemy knows you're empty. <laughs> well, I, I know I'm empty because I'm not in anyone at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, uh, the other product, again, they had it last year, but there was a bit more sort of traction on it this year, um, was the M-Tech um, uh, Flux helmet. Yep. that they've done which looks really really comfortable and i, I kind of i like the look of that and i, I wouldn't mind um, getting my hands on one at some point um because as helmets go i think it's the one that's going to make my head look least like it's made of pie um, <laughs> 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 yeah so um so yeah pts and the, the mwal uh, da was yeah one of the most exciting things i saw coming out of uh out of shot this year I wonder what the price tag is going to be on the uh, the Flux helmet. Um, I think that's out. I want to say it's like it's over a hundred dollars. I want to say like one twenty, but I might be okay, wrong. So, I, so that's not the trade price I've just given away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I'm not airsoft international, so. Um, <laughs> Mike, draw up. <laughs> um, no, I think it looks interesting. I'm not a big helmet person on that. Um, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Graham. Really? <laughs> I just You're revisioned making... what was going through my head then. <laughs> You're making it too easy for me now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, my turn. What did I see? Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. That's right. Um, it's after okay. nine o'clock now. It's fine. That's it. Watershed's <laughs> gone. Um, right. Um, most of you know my. I'm going to be careful what I say here. My enthusiasm to the uh, guys at NSF Innovations I think they do some really cool products, and they have released or are releasing Bang 22. Now, this is their first BFG, um, and this uses the 22 round mag or 22 round shells, as we as it says in the title, and I'll have the video there. So, this is a timed BFG, pretty much taking the Tornado 2 almost shell really and design uh, and actually using shells for a bfg so i think this is a fantastic move because bfgs in the states are much desired and with the lack of trmrs over there there seems to the, the, this is kind of coming out as a perfect timing and the fact that the shells at least over in the states is cheap and affordable However, you know, me and Jim were talking about this when we saw the video. What that's going to look like over here in the UK is something that's probably going to be harder to, to run with. Uh, let's just fast forward this video a tad if you're watching. But I like the idea. BFGs, I mean, it's a good territory to go in. As much as I like all the BB grenades, they are in a state where most people want a BFG. You know, it is... When you say BFG... Blank firing grenade, sorry. Right. So uh, so this is used as a blank to, to make a bang rather than a BB grenade going off everywhere. <laughs> um, and BBs flying around the room, much like the tornado. Or um, I suppose they did the they did the blast XL, which was a, it was a kind of a green gas grenade. Yeah, it was a percussion-based one, wasn't it, rather than yeah. a, a, uh, a blank firing sort of style. Absolutely. 
Um, they do allow uh, different types of 22 shells, so you can get them louder, which is pretty cool. Um, and price-wise, I thought it was, I think they were saying $100, which I think, again, for, for a BFG is good price. For um, If you compare that, if you say it's around about 80 quid, that's kind of the price for most of our BFGs over here. I'd be surprised though if we see it at eighty quid. I think like with import and well over they're, here, they're heavy, old, <laughs> they're heavy old things to ship. So I, I, w I would be expecting to see that being north of a hundred pounds. Um, but my big concern, and I said this to you when, when we saw pictures of it, um, is how easy it's going to be to get those. Um, they're not even really blanks because it's not. Although it says two two on the box, they're not conventional two two blanks. They're for they come from like the the tall world. They're um, yeah. like well, someone says they're nail gun cartridges. Yeah, well, yeah, hilti guns and things like that. Um, but there are different types. There's there's different calibers of them, and I don't know many hardware shops in the UK that would stock them. Um, I mean, I think it, like some of them you can just buy on eBay. You know, it's, there are some that are readily available, but they're not cheap, or at least they're not as cheap cheap as I thought they were going to be. Yeah. Um, so, but it'd be interesting to see where that comes comes out, and you know, it's got the potential to be the best grenade ever. But I've just I've been disappointed by so many grenades over the last year or so. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, no, and I get that. But I think for from a North America point of view, I think they've been mm. stuck with BFGs. They couldn't import the TRMRs, for example. They can't mm. import the Alpha Techs. So this is a solution for them over there. Um, like you say. Seeing them over here, probably not going to be likely, or it's going to be very rare. But if there's one thing to say, there's some innovations I think on the, the grand whole scheme of things are good quality, solid products. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're going and, to be reliable. And they get each, you know, each product that they bring out um, seems to be better than the last as well, yeah. you know, in terms of that quality and the, and the build of it. So. Yeah. It's a small company at the end of the day, isn't it? And they, they are pretty much held up by the reputation of their previous product yeah um so in terms of sort of field use with grenades i know these different companies keep bringing out these different types of guns especially airsoft innovations i don't see them used that often in the field if at all as opposed to you know the disposable bangs you can just buy i see them used all the time uh, I, mean, I think i think cqb has got to be the main place for these i think you're right i mean throwing them in the woodland uh, especially BFGs, they don't typically go off on soft ground. No. That said, um, because this is timed, this is going to give you more opportunity to use it. And that's the other thing. Timed grenades are a lot more handy in these situations. But do you want to throw, say, 80 quid out in the woods? That's typically going to be black <laughs> when it goes down into the woods uh, and you're not going to ever find it again. Um, we used quite a few at the fort, that's for sure. When we were at the fort just a few weeks ago, um, a lot were going off. Um, Use of hearing protection is required. Absolutely. Yes. But no, I thought that was a, a cool product for S of Innovations, and it's mm -hmm. been very quiet from, from my point of view from that end, so it was really cool to see that they'd been working on something else. I still haven't seen the Tornado 2s over here. Um mm. So that'd be something to see whether they do kind of pick up over here. But BB grenades are just very niche. Mm. I so. don't think they're that effective. Oh, I've had some great times with them. Really? But yeah, I, I mean, I pretty much only rock BB grenades. Um, and I have really good fun with them. And they're, they're enjoyable and they really go off in a room and you can hear everyone. But again, it's, it's how reliable they are. I think the big thing for me is there are a lot of ones which aren't reliable. They don't. Either they don't go off in a good position, which means obviously they uh, kind of empty half themselves against the, the wall, or they don't stand up and they leak after, you know, 50 to 100 throws, if you're lucky. Or uh, I get a hold of one and just break one on the first throw. <laughs> That's what usually happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll still stand by the, and this is the Stratame, the Nova Epsilon <laughs> is the best BB grenade out there at the moment. Um, but it's made of CNC aluminium, and I think that's where it stands up differently to the rest of them. All right, does fanboy. It, <laughs> does, it make enough, does it make enough bang? Because the ones I've seen... It makes no bang. That's the thing. BB grenades make no bang. Well, don't the people think it's just a ricochet, then? 
well, I mean, that's, that's always the that's it, always yeah. the problem. Yeah, that is a hundred was the problem. Yeah. There was there was a I can't remember the company oh, they oh, made one nozzle down and just all the BBs just go into the ground. <laughs> that's my experience of them. There was a, a BB that had. A, do you remember the old when you were kids? Probably the old cap guns. You put a cap on the top of the grenade, so when it off went off and threw the BBs, it would then have a little cap that goes off as well. Um, I can't remember the company there. It's probably some sort of wish company, if I had time to think about it. It's almost as bad as those plastic dumbbells with the CO2 capsules in that just you throw. Oh it, yes, it <laughs> falls apart and you just have this turd lying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to play against a player that had a couple of the wish grenades, the ones where all the arms fly out. Um, <laughs> He threw two of them at me. I went, they didn't go off. He went, they did go off. I was like, they didn't. And, I looked at and he's like, I'm like, oh, they did. They just didn't even, yeah. I didn't even hear a ricochet. I was in a room, didn't hear a ricochet, didn't feel a single thing go off in the room. They like just that. look like a kid's toy, those. Yeah. Just... yeah, bright orange, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but that's always, you're, you're 100% right there, Sarah, is that if you don't feel them or you're not too sure, yeah. um, it's one of the cons of a, a BB grenade for sure. So next up, uh, should we go back to you, Sarah? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to Valken again. I'm not playing favouritism with them or anything. <laughs> no, you're not it's sponsored. Just, it's just got... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, Sarah, no, sponsorship <laughs> next week. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it's the uh, Valken Kilo Tracer Unit. Um, now, I have seen another company... Um, bringing out the same sort of thing at SHOT Show. Um, but I'm going to talk about this one in particular because I've heard the description of what it does is a little bit different. So it's two say, hours... Sorry, I will say there's something about YouTube. Every Valken video is a buffering video. I've got... It's <laughs> because of the millions of people watching. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a micro tracer unit. Um, and it's 65 millimeters long, so it's diddy. Um, it can be used on both pistols and rifles, uh, as it comes with a thread adapter for both. Yeah. Um, it dual powered, high powered LEDs, all the usual stuff. But the bit I wanted to talk about is it has an intelligent motion sensor. And let me get this right it turns on after going through three BBs. And turns off after being idle for at least 40 minutes. Um, and I think the idea is that you only have to charge it occasionally. Um, now, G&G have brought out exactly the same thing. But their description is it shuts off after one minute and automatically turns on when you move again. <laughs> so I, I'm a bit confused as to why... It would need this at all. What do you think? So it's a battery saver, which is cool. It's just whether you fire BBs before it picks up, right? I think that'll be the question. I'm not convinced. <laughs> and then I think like Spectre Arms just brought out their version of a very similar sort of thing. And these all seem like a bit of a variation on the Zortec ones. And it's just like get out i don't know why it's like we always need to have this conversation last week about the the innovation side of it it's like and the question i want answered is does it work with red tracers because yeah. a lot of those small ones don't so if this has got a higher powered led in it does that now cure that problem for arp users and yeah people who want pistol tracer units and stuff so it's um but I don't know. There's a lot of those small tracer units that have come out in the last six months. That's for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, it'd be inter I mean, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. I, I think tracers have definitely been up on the rise in the last year. I think we've mentioned before, it seems to be a lot more of them, even in CQB sites, people just run them. I think the price of tracer rounds have come down maybe enough that people are happy to buy them instead of generic BBs. Um, but what we're, see what we're seeing here, and the comments are already agreeing, <laughs> there's a there's a particular one one popular brand, but potentially everyone else is using the same manufacturer. Um, so, I mean, we'll see what it's like when it comes out. But I do think it's cool. I mean, it's cool to see more tracer units mm. for sure. Yes, the proof will be in the pudding. Absolutely. 
Jim, go for yours. Um, well, I'll make this quick because I'll probably want to talk about this in later episodes when I actually get my hands on one for for real, which is the GBLS 416. Um, yes. That thing is sexy in a way that only one man can know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chuck Nice. Thank you. Um, uh, um, I just, I like 416s. I've really, really begun to like GBLSs. Um, I think they're very, very cool pieces of kit. Will I ever be able to own one and afford one? I don't know. I doubt it. I'd probably have to speak to Phil about you know, whether or not I can sell his kidney on for him and make some profit <laughs> off the top. Um, but, yeah, this uh, it's exciting. It's a cool professional training weapon sort of style rifle, um, and it's, it's a 416, so... They've been in high demand for a long time. If anyone, um, a lot of people buy 416s, they want that kind of look. And if you want the look as well as that kind of realism or as real as it gets in that simulation simulation with the AEGs, um, GBFs have made the answer. And I presume given the fact of the kind of the gearbox in the working is probably going to be identical or near identical to what we've seen with well, the M4A1. Yeah, I mean, it adds, so another gun to the, it adds another gun to the GBLS roster as well. And I, yeah. I, I haven't checked the measurements, so someone on the internet will probably tell me I'm wrong. Um, but I think it's going to sit in between the CQB and the, the sort of standard um, GBLS uh, M4 quite nicely. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can see a lot of people have been asking for this quite a while. I see a lot of people buying the M4A1s and trying to kind of bodge their own 416 out of it as much as they can. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, it's um, in my gun collection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I'll be honest, I'm looking forward to more of their AK collection, which I'm hoping they show off at IWA. Uh, that's going to be really interesting. But I think that, uh, yeah, again, they answer what everyone's, uh, everyone's been asking for them for a long time. It's yeah. just see people uh, bring out the wallet, the credit card, and the kidney collection. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, number two for me for this one, um, and again, this is something that we talked about last year at IWA. Is the modified PP2K. This is the the Russian equivalent of essentially an MP9. Uh, if you've not seen this before, it is a gas blowback rifle. Uh, variable FPS, two hundred and fifty to three fifty is what they're saying right now with a. Uh, collapsible stock now what i really like about this uh, one is obviously the unique design but two the magazine actually serves as a stock as well so the extended magazine can be removed and served as a stock which i just think is so cool uh, i mean obviously you've got the torch along the bottom but i just think it's it's something totally different to what we've really seen it was for like landing aircraft <laughs> <laughs> well originally it's like it does look more, more like a Grenade launcher, you know, you could put a 40 mil shell in there, but it is a torch. Yeah, looks um, like a grenade launcher that only aims at testicles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the weirdest that's thing. The, that's 40 mic, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's have, you, have you not seen one of these, Sarah? No. It's, not uh, at all. So you can see the charging handle there up the top, um, and that's that there. Uh, the charging handle at the top is open and exposed. It just looks really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited to see. Uh, what this performs like, especially in the UK, given our weather. But it is a love it or hate it Marmite looking gun for sure. Um, but what's really cool, modifier, selling the PP2K, selling the extended mags, the torches and all of that, all the accessories there are going to be available on launch. And they've been showing them off at MOA last year as well. So very excited for that. Just looks like a nail gun. <laughs> yeah. I should run off those Bane 22. Run down, guns. Run down <laughs> search PP2K and search Vladimir Putin. There's a brilliant photo <laughs> of him with it. <laughs> so, um, and uh, because of that, I did have to put that skirt the right way around the dragon off in the, uh, the background there because I think that's going to be great. Uh, have a little uh, sod the side on. We we'll go to go with the PP2K and the SVD. So, uh, yes, so I'm looking forward to that. Again, for me, it will always be what's the performance like in the UK, given the weather conditions. But I'm hoping, given the fact it's variable, we should have a little bit more of it. Cool. So so that was my second one round on that one. And I can see much like the comment section there. If you are watching, listening to us on a 
or either replay or a podcast, you should definitely come and join us live and join the conversation because a lot of people have a, have a different <laughs> opinion to mine with the PP2K. <laughs> so, so if you do like the PP2K... to agree with me and Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you do like the PP2K, come in and join and uh, <laughs> defend me here. <laughs> no. uh, I, would, I would just show there. Uh, that is the real PP2K there. We've looked at the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at this site on top there. You can never tell if those sites are on backwards or not. <laughs> <laughs> they always look like they are. But so, uh, yeah, the... so, so it is real steel. And, and I think a lot of people think it looks like more of a made up rifle. Or, uh... <laughs> <laughs> or a nail gun. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, but no, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be interesting to see. And I've got high hopes with Modify for sure. Right, uh, we'll go with Jim for your last one. Oh, we're breaking the order. Yeah, we're breaking the order, that's it. What? Um, you weren't ready. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Um, so my last pick uh, was a bit of um, tactical gear. Um, and it's not just because I'm wearing a T-shirt with their logo on, but 511 have brought out the Rush 100. Um, so you're part of their ambassador program, are you? I only wish. <laughs> 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 They don't answer the phone to me. <laughs> I can't even get hold of the cleaner. Um, but no, uh, it's a cool pack. I've I've loved Rush packs for ages, and although they brought out their new um, uh, new line of packs as well that sit alongside them, uh, the Rushes have always been really good quality kit. And that one looks like the the one that I'd probably use for a bit of bushcraft and um, maybe some twenty four hour events. And um, Pete and I actually found out about the Rush one hundred by just trawling through the 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 back end portal that we do all our 511 ordering from and it's like oh what's a rush 100 and we couldn't find out any information and then that post dropped and we were like oh it's so exciting um but, this looks uh, like a looks like a bag you could put your other half in when they let they, they don't let you play airsoft and it also comes with a shovel by the looks of it <laughs> and, and a belt to reinforce the weight <laughs> No shovel is separate, um, <laughs> but, but, but the belt and everything. What is nice is that, um, from what I understand, they're sizing them, so there's going to be two different sizes for the harnesses for it. So depending on your size and body shape, you can um, you know, get one that's more comfortable to you. So uh, from what I understand, it's not coming out in a massive range of colours, um, unlike everything else that, that 511 tend to do, where they'll do like three or four different colours. With this one, it's probably not, and... Like I say, it's probably not going to be for most people, but for me, that's that was like a product that I would quite happily purchase and love and own and maybe move a body in one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I need to. I can't help but watch more and more bushcraft stuff more recently. Um, yeah. And looking at that display just makes you want to just go out and try, doesn't it, really? In the... well, I just want the end of the world to happen because then I have a proper <laughs> use for that bag. You know, well, look, <laughs> But China's on its way, so uh, maybe oh. not too long. <laughs> right. Uh, Sarah, going back to you now. Uh, yeah, what just was that me. last on your list? I saved, I've saved my real favourite for last. Yes, of course, <laughs> have answered my prayers with this one. It's probably the gun that I've probably looked at and tried to find copies of for my cost cosplay costumes and um, probably... The, the most the gun that I would uh, the gun the pistol of my dreams basically is the Lancer Tactical Chopper licensed Rhino Revolver series, um, which is basically Harley Quinn's gun from Suicide Squad. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I was really excited to see this. Um, it's yeah, I'm just really fangirling over this. <laughs> um, from what from what I know, um, they've worked very closely with chopper to ensure that these are up to their specs and parts of the gun are going to be made in Italy by chopper so you are getting uh, parts of it that are the real steel and the real deal so it's as close to the real thing as possible I think they're going to make an airsoft version and air gun so if you're into air guns as well um <laughs> <laughs> Why did you put it next to me, Graham? That's the really wrong button. <laughs> what is wrong um, with you tonight? <laughs> so yeah, um, the the two tone that one there being shown there is there's only going to be 500 in the world, and I know that 150 of those are going to America. 
So these are all shell based, right? Mm, yeah. So it comes with six shells and runs on CO2. It uh, has a built in Allen key so you can tighten up the CO2. It's got a double action trigger um, with a possible March, April release and a possible £200 price mark. Cool. Uh, yeah. uh, and and compared, compared to Desert Eagle, it's got to be around about the same size, right? Um, it looks massive. No, it looks about the size of uh, like a Dan Weston revolver. Yeah, I would say it was, yeah, smaller. But, um, yeah, I'm just really, really excited about this. And I've not used one of these revolver-style pistols before, so that would be very interesting. I'd be interested to see how it feels and what it's like and how heavy it is. I uh, I had the King Arms Peacemaker, fantastic looking pistol, completely not practical. Um, just to take it out in the field once was scary enough because you know you only had six shots. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like a nice piece. Again, it's uh, how practical they will be on the field. But if you're you're oh, trying to do the rest of <laughs> doing the rest of your outfit, yeah, your rest of your cosplay, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah. I didn't think uh, we could find a gun uglier than the one that Graham put up. But we <laughs> needed some tonight. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, Sarah. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, it's horrid. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of like the Gangnam's Gangnam, not Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> Gang damn pistol or something like that. Uh, someone in the comments, I'm sure, is going to know more about it. The Hex pistol or something like that. It was called. Um. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually, it's that coming up. It's been in Suicide Squad. It's been in lots of different films. That style of gun. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, um, let me know what you think when you get it. <laughs> if it's going to be one of those pistols that you're going to get, um, I'd be interested to see what it's like when someone's running it on the field. To me, it looks massive. But let's uh, <laughs> just... get that and then shoot both of us with it. You do understand <laughs> that? <laughs> I told you it was a good gun. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, see, Gundam, there we go. Someone is, <laughs> someone's in the comments. There we go. But um, let's move on to the last one of the evening here. Um, and I know this is going to definitely be a bit more of a love it or hate it here, but I am throwing out something that I saw last year at IWA, and that is the oh, what is the B and T. USW, so that's the universal service weapon. Let's bring the photo of it up there. Um, so um, I know there's a lot of people that like it, and there's a heck of a load of people that don't see the point in it. Uh, this is essentially a pistol with a brace on it <laughs> and a, uh, a built in red dot. What's to stop you just buying a pistol and, and just buying those bits to go on it? Well, I mean, you'd have to do a really, really big bodge job to get the stock on. But I think ultimately it's a bit of licensed kit. So B&T do the license for this. Um, in the real steel world, obviously the uh, stock would be one of those parts there that helps brace shots. For the air world, though, it's completely unnecessary. And that's where the problem's going to be. If you're doing it for a loadout or you just like that style, then you'll be interested but you aren't going to outshoot anyone else with an, any other pistol. Uh, and the only other problem that we see with this is that obviously you're buying a pistol with a stock, but you know they show off the torch and the silencer and the aim point on top, or the strike system's red dot on top, but obviously none of that comes with it, so you are just buying a pistol with a stock. But I like the look of it. I just don't think that I would get one purely because of using them on the field. Um, Jim, what's your thoughts on it? Have you seen this before? That you and I should stop being friends because you're <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, uh, some people are going to love this and think it's cool. Would I ever run it? No. Um, I think if I'm going to go down that road, I'd, I'd just buy an MP7. Um, or, I mean, again, if you want officially licensed kit, ASG um, with KWA, do the MP9, um, which at least you've got a 50 round mag with. Yeah. Um, whereas with pistol mag, I don't know. I can see like that becoming like you know, we, we get lots of videos um from the states of you know speed soft arenas and stuff like that, and you know, guys that are running around doing you know really quick sort of 
you know, speedball style play. I could see those guys really liking it. Um, you know, and it being it's fun. Just, just braced. Yeah, I mean, it, it's that whole SMG world, but now you've got something that's even lighter and more compact. And yeah. Um, and again, the fact that all right, it doesn't come with those extras, but you can put them on. So it's got a threaded barrel already. You're not limited to having to buy one of these little pistol style tracer units. You can get one of the the, the bigger ones, which is also BNT licensed as well. I'm sure that the ASG will make sure you only buy that one. Um, but it's yeah, it, it's interesting. It's just not for me. Um, I I just don't know why. Like even BNT called it the universal service weapon because I don't see what's so universal about it. It's I'd have expected it to be, you know, a bit more universal. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just I, me, but then I haven't seen one in the flesh, so you know, I, I might be missing something. I'd be the first uh, to admit that. What I really liked about it um, is that the top <laughs> slide is not the top slide is not part of the stock. So in terms of you know the follow up shots. If you've got it braced up against you, you're not really going to. Again, Airsoft, how much kick is really going to be in the pistol anyway? Um, but it's kind of a, a nice little feature to me. But, I mean, as you said, I mean, it's not something I would probably run. Um, you've also got things like the SMC9 from G&G. If you're one of those people that like that style where you want to have a, a kind of a carbine from a pistol, then uh the usw may be something that's up your street but i just thought it was, i think it looks cool it's just for me it's, if it's not practical on the field um it's it's like one of those little guns that you bring out at the end of the day the little fun gun that you let everyone have a go of yeah or a pistols only game where you're like aha yeah, look at this i'm the dick that's got something different but technically it's a pistol you know <laughs> i think um, what is really good though like and again if you look at like all the products over overall that we've talked about some of which to us haven't been that you know, innovative, but I think it's that it really does show that these companies are listening to to players. And yeah. you know, when things like the the ARP nine were was such a big success, and people wanted maybe a different version of it or something like that, there are different versions now. There are you know different versions of these sort of pistols. I mean, I, I think again, the the one big saving grace for the uh, for the USW is that finally it's a pistol like carbine kit almost that you don't have to build yourself and don't have to worry about it not working or not fitting with your your gun so again i can see that being really really appealing for it so um but yeah it's, it's nice to see that asg valk and all these other people are are getting on board and not oh, just bringing out another m4 i will say one thing here which may now interest sarah into buying one um right now obviously the issue with that usw is the magazine capacity now they are there's nothing promised yet, but they're talking about can they get 50 round mags? Can they get drum mags? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said that once and that stuck with me <laughs> forever. <laughs> it's never going to leave me, is it? <laughs> can you imagine? And that's when, when Jim said about speed suffers, that's it. You're going to have that pistol with a little bracket <laughs> there with a drum mag and bottom traced around that front. Um, yeah, that's pretty much going to... Uh, ruin anyone's CQB experience. <laughs> <laughs> the only saving grace is how will it perform and how long will it last? Exactly. Um, but we'll see how that goes in the future. And are they going to do a CO2 mag for it? Because obviously... Um, yes, they've confirmed AS they will. Oh, they are. Excellent. Because yeah. ASG have always pretty much done a, a companion CO2 mag for a lot of their guns. So Yeah, so it will come with green gas but the co2 is already in discussions i'd uh, be interested what internally it's most like with all the pistols they've got out there i heard in one of the videos that it's very similar to a shadow 2 but it doesn't look like a shadow 2 so it would be interesting to see internally but that's it i mean there was so much more that we haven't even discussed a lot more lance tactical stuff tipman have uh, got some cool changes some as you said rightly so earlier just feedback from players on their hpa version um and now just kind of tweaking and making improvements um yeah. and what was also interesting from tipman i want to say is a an entry level hpa rifle i think that's like less than 300 quid which would be interesting it's a polymer rifle but it is hpa so, um, again, there's a lot of other companies out there that we haven't even discussed. But um, I think that's pretty much it for this show. Well, we've we've got... run. Yeah, we've and say so we've, we've got... do an hour and we never do. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, if you are watching or you've, this is the first time you have listened to the show, thank you so much. Please subscribe to the show, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or your podcasting platform. And if you are listening to the podcast on Journey, um, when you next pull over or the train stops or you're just sitting there in the office listening to another episode, don't forget, just drop us a review. Five stars or don't bother. <laughs> 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 we uh, we really appreciate it. They really help um, kind of bump us up to other airsoft listeners. So. That's it. I think we're done for the week. Thank you so much for watching. Anything for closing thoughts for you guys? Can Don't we have a shot though every week? <laughs> 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 well, I think that's a good point to finish off. Next week, we will be announcing the guest. I actually need to reach out to the guest, so it should be quite exciting. Um, but we're hoping to talk about gun teching um an idiot's guide to gun tech in um and i know that if you have got your questions feel free to throw them into the chat next week so until then we shall see you next time seriously don't get corona flu <laughs>